Hello and welcome to the first race of the 2014 PCC Cup Series season. As always, we have the starting lineup scrolling for you there on the bottom. Nicholas Cordova has won the pole for this race in a completely different car than what he had at the Australian Exhibition. After that race, uh, a sim racer walked up to the team and said, Hey, your car looks like ass. I want to paint you a better one. So he did. So it showed up here at Road Atlanta and promptly won the pole. So as we go through the field, you can see there Ryan Jeffries is starting in a row eight. Good qualifying run for him and his teammate Ben Worthington starting in 18th spot. Quite an improvement from last year here at this track where I believe he started in the mid 30s. Claire Aussier shanked her lap and is starting in 22nd. A couple drivers starting close to the back that we did not expect to see back here. Only 32 drivers set a time for race one. So quite a few drivers who we did not expect to see. There's Steve Peterson making a start in 30th place. That car was slowest in practice. Uh, Tom Wilson starting back in the field. Ike Durbin, who looked very fast in practice. Silvio Rinaldi, Ingrid Hadeland, those two were top five in practice as well. Creeper Stevenson, Chris Washer, who wrecked on his only attempt, and Unyang Kim wrecked on his attempt as well. Race number two, Alina Lozereva took the pole. Ben Atkins on her outside doing quite a good job in qualifying there. Clara Kendall, Gaspar D'Souza. Uh, Duncan Cobb, a very surprising run for him in sixth place. Gabriel Messina going back through the field. There's Brian Gallagher, Robert Nelson, and Josh Marshall make up row number five. Uh, a couple of these drivers are making their first ever PCC Cup Series starts and starting quite high up on the grid, so it'll be good to see them. There's Richard Hertz, another one of those drivers. He attempted to qualify for Cleveland last year. Jordan Demas in the Pentelux Racing, that's a local entry based out of Atlanta, as we cycle through the field there. James Hewitt won at Brno last year, and he's in row number 11, starting 21st. Whitney Fuller ran a few races last year. Barbara Burt. Uh, running for Double B Motorsports team car to Richard Hertz as we continue to go through the grid. Uh, the only car that did not set a lap uh, in this qualifying session was Matt Brinson, who had some troubles with the uh, transmission in that car. Uh, they actually brought a blank white number 38 car to this track. Uh, looked about nine or so years old. Uh, John Kirkpatrick was pretty slow in his lap, and there you see Matt Brinson starting shotgun on the grid. Nicholas Cordova leads the field to the green flag in that new number 39. It looks quite nice, if I do say so myself. That sim racer who painted that car, it uh, looks absolutely gorgeous on track. Uh, there's a couple stragglers back in the field. There was Creeper Stevenson, Unyang Kim, and uh, I believe that was Chris Washer back there. But Nicholas Cordova now extends his lead over Greg Maddox and Arliss Bennington there as Bennington challenges for second place. Uh, swinging it a bit wide there in the S's. I think he's going to be able to get second place. Here is Alex Posington as he collides with Sam Lussar. Sends himself into the grass, and Lenny Jacobs does as well. Uh, nearly takes out a couple of the cones there. Gets back right on track. Here's Chris Washer running back. This is the battle for last place between him and Unyoung Kim as those two collide. And, uh, well, Chris Washer just kind of goes off the track there. I'm not sure how he got that Red Bull sponsorship considering... Uh, He's really not done anything worth uh, noting in uh, any series whatsoever. Here's Preston Bell as he suffers some brake trouble in that number 75 car. He runs into the back of Tom Delgado, and that wrinkles the rear end of that car, the 36 car, but they continue on. Preston Bell is running currently in 21st position. Uh, lap number two, here is Scott Wallen getting turned around by Alex Phillips, and he makes contact with Claire Aussie, you can see there that there's been a couple black flags thrown for the three stragglers and uh, Steve Peterson as well going on board with uh, Claire Aussie here. She really just had nowhere to go, runs into Scott Wallen, and that's going to do a little bit of fender damage. And uh, that looks like it's going to impede her straight line speed as there Alex Phillips just goes flying on by. As I mentioned before, uh, these three drivers, Creeper Stevenson, Unyang Kim, and Chris Washer, as well as Steve Peterson, who hasn't brought his car in yet, have all received black flags for cutting the course. Uh, so those drivers are going to come in and service their cars and uh, serve those black flags. So here is Nicholas Corredovos now, who has opened up quite a big lead now over uh, the rest of the field as uh, 
Well, uh, there's uh, Creeper Stevenson coming out of the pits. He served his stop and go penalty. But just barely back there, you can see uh, Greg Maddox is now Chris Washer. Oh, what are you doing? He just ran into Alex Posington, pushes wide, and takes himself right out of the race. And I think the officials are going to want to have a word with Chris Washer after that stupid maneuver. Alex Posington, that damage is going to take him out of the race early on here on lap number four. Here is Arliss Bennington, who is running in third place. He had a very strong run at Cleveland last season where he finished in the top five. Greg Max bails for the pits, which means that Bennington will inherit second place. And that number 500 car, not too much sponsorship on that car, uh, just a little bit of sponsorship from American Hand Tools, uh, AHT on that car. He's being hunted down by Richard Dean MacGyver, and I believe that's Laris Ryu there in the 93, the Indonesian jet. But Arliss Bennington doing a fantastic job early on. Here's Richard Dean MacGyver, who is, uh, he finished, I believe, second or third in the championship last season in 2013, because this was the only team that was not affected by the time rip. So, a bit interesting there. Uh, Retro 80 Racing finished 1-2-3 in the championship last year. Unfortunately, we couldn't bring that to you because all of us were floating in the white void. So kudos to that team for finishing 1-2-3 in the championship, although it was a bit unopposed. Here is Preston Bell uh, running a little bit further back in the field, and he's got a problem with that car. He's going to pull it off to the side, and uh, he's reporting that the problem is indeed terminal. And that will be the end of Preston Bell's race early on. Tough break for him. Here is Steve Peterson, who is, uh, as you saw a little bit earlier, has another black flag. Uh, he is a local uh, Alabama, or excuse me, local Georgia uh, construction worker who owns his own construction company, Peterson Excavating, and that's on the car right now. And uh, well, it's always been his dream to run in one of these kinds of races. So uh, he bought himself a ride with the Zach Tech team, and he's being able to fulfill his dream. He brings his car into the pits. Here's Laris Rio. She makes some contact with Richard Newman MacGyver, goes into the wall, and spins that car across the S's. Tough break for her. She's got a bit of damage on the side of that car, but she's going to get it going once again. That car is sponsored by Scania this year. Looks quite nice, if I do say so myself, going on board. Seeing what happened to her here, she tries to make a move on the inside to make some contact and hits the wall. And that car is going to spin across the track and into the wall again. Uh, that car will continue on without too much damage. Uh, she didn't really lose too much uh, positions. Here's, here's Sylvia Rinaldi doing battle with John Brocky back in the field. And, oh, Bracci cuts wide, and she goes into the wall. And that's going to be the end of Sylvia Rinaldi's race very early on. Uh, tough break for her. She was running in 17th place. She had made up a lot of ground from the start and was really working her way through the field, and to have it cut short like that is just a tragedy for her. Tough break for Silvio Rinaldi, the new driver of that number two car for Manticore Engineering. Here is Chris Winter, who's up to fourth place by lap number eight. Chris Winter really doing a good job in this car. He's always been a road course expert, but he hasn't really had uh, the performance to show for it. Uh, but this year, it looks like he's definitely stepped up his game. Last year, at this time, he'd probably be running in about the top ten, but now he's running in fourth place very early on. Alex Phillips and Magenta Nelson Andrew take each other into the wall, and that's going to do a bit of damage to both of those cars. Uh, they were battling for the 14th position, and that's going to mean that they're going to pit this time by and surrender that track position. Here's Greg Max doing battle with Tom Wilson and Kyle McWilla, and Maddox hits... Uh, hits Wilson there after Maddox bailed for the pit lane. Oh, Chris uh, Chris DeSanta also involved. Uh, really just kind of had nowhere to go. Let's go on board with Chris DeSanta and see what he saw here. And, uh, well, it just looked like he had nowhere to go and ran to the back of him. You are unsavable. You will be the fertilizer of the 10th paradigm. Oh, uh, well, okay then. So uh, we're going to go on board with... Uh, I believe this is Nicholas Corradovos and uh, Creeper Stevenson. What are you doing? He makes contact with Nicholas Corradovos, and uh, that's going to be another black flag for the uh, for the 420 car. And here is, I believe this is Kyle McWilla in the number uh, 12 car. That 8 car is about to serve another black flag there. 
tries to make a cut on the inside and oh collects Ryan Matthews Matthews goes into the wall and does quite a bit of damage to that car we're gonna go on board with Ryan Matthews as well, they made it three wide he really just had nowhere to go tried to pull back on track and McWilla was there and he's gonna spin that car around take a little tap in the wall and keep on going Ryan Matthews was running in uh, around the mid 20s here is Richard Dean MacGyver who's about to make a pass for second on Arliss Bennington who appears to be a little bit off the pace as oh yes he definitely is off the pace something is not quite right with that 500 car now as you can see the gap that uh, Richard Dean MacGyver just opened up and blasted on by here's uh, Arliss Bennington who yeah there's definitely something wrong with that car if Chris Winter caught him that fast because Chris Winter is a couple seconds behind uh, Richard Dean MacGyver, he decides that it's too risky to stay out on track, and Arliss Bennington will bail for the pit lane here in this number 500 car. Uh, had a very strong run at Cleveland, and he's going to be running the rest of the road courses this season. Here is, I believe this is Jacob Eichholz in uh, the forward fast racing number uh, 88 car. He's currently, he has inherited the fourth position from uh, after Arliss Bennington at pit. And now he is running quite strong. He has always been performing well on these road courses. He subbed for the injured Grigory Novakovsky last season at Katsev. And now uh, his performances in that car have transcended over here to forward fast racing. Here is uh, Ben Worthington, who is also doing quite well. He is in 14th place on lap number 12. His uh, road course program has definitely uh, improved from last year. Last year he was one of the slowest cars on track, absolutely one of the slowest cars on track. Some people called him a moving chicane at some points last year, but this year it looks like he's definitely stepped it up. Over winter he took it to heart and he practiced on road courses such as this one. He practiced at VIR and he's definitely improved his game coming into the season. Here is Andy Lambert, driver of the number 34 car and he is in fifth place and behind him even more surprising is Damon Jones and Luke Palerin who are in sixth and seventh position uh, very good runs for these drivers it's something we haven't really seen too much of from any of these teams uh, Luke Palerin is making his debut he's up to seventh place ROG Motorsports was on hard, uh, fell down on hard times after being a four car juggernaut in the mid 2000s after the uh, after the recession, that car downsized to two cars, and uh, well, they really fell down, but now they've really picked themselves back up, and it looks like they've, uh, they're have they shaping up back to form. Now, uh, Nicholas Corridovos is uh, definitely putting a lot of uh, cars a lap down now. Oh, there's a bit of car a couple cars off there. Arles Bennington went off. Here is Kyle McWellow making, trying to make a pass on uh, Barry Juno sweeps wide. Tom Delgado has none of it, and he hooks him into the wall. Tom Delgado goes off into the grass, so is Arliss Bennington. Uh, Ryan Matthews collects more damage, so does Nick Azure now. Going on board Tom Delgado, you see here McWellow tries to push wide, and Tom Delgado has none of it, hooks Barry Juvenal into the wall, and as you look back, you can see Juvenal sweep across the track, Arliss Bennington going into the dirt, and a couple other cars are collected. Here's Damon Jones. Uh, that's a battle for sixth place between him and Ingrid Hadeland, who started way back in the field, uh, back in the mid-30s, and she's fought her way all the way up into sixth place now. So an excellent job for that number 002 car. But uh, Damon Jones also having a very strong run. Now Claire Aussier, this is unexpected. Claire Aussier about to go a lap down. Aussier has not had the best of weekends in that number zero car. She hasn't really improved from her starting position at all, and Nicholas Corradovo's just put her a lap down. Here is Ingrid Hadeland once again, and she is getting ready to pass the 34 of Andy Lambert for fifth position now, working her way all the way up from, uh, I think she started like 35th or 36th in that number double zero car after she failed to set a time in qualifying. As you see there, they're battling side by side, coming on the front straightaway. It looks like Hadeland is going to get the advantage head into turn number one and she will sweep over and take a fifth place from Andy Lambert. Here is Sam Lusar running a little bit back in the pack and oh he was trying to make a move up I believe he was running in eighth or ninth place at that time and Damon Jones goes around so Sam Lusar now after having some brake problems hits the pit lane to get some of that hood damage repaired Damon Jones sweeped a bit wide 
and sweeped a bit inside and hooked Luke Pellerin and turned himself into the dirt there and he's going to lose a couple spots trying to get back on track. Uh, he does not pit to repair the damage there. Tom Delgado now in 19th place, getting ready to go lap down on lap number 18. So that just tells you the pace that Nicholas Corradovos is setting. Tom Delgado uh, has downsized his team to a one-car team uh, from a three-car team last season, and uh, he is the only driver, and that team looks like it's lacking a bit of sponsorship, to be entirely honest. Don't know if he's going to be able to make it the entire season the way he's been running. Here is... Uh, Ingrid Hadelan now, and she's working her way up. That's Jacob Eichholz in front of her, and she is the fastest car on the track, and it is lap number 20 right now, halfway point. She is faster than the leader, so that is a big surprise. Here is Creeper Stevenson, presumably getting ready to serve another black flag, and oh, Ryan Matthews has none of it, and he just dumps him into the dirt here in a couple of the last turns, and Creeper Stevenson just kind of... Eh, goes and sits in the dirt for a little bit. Uh, Ingrid Hadeland now trying to make a pass on Jacob Eichholz. Uh, and uh, let's see, she makes the pass, so she moves up to fourth place now. So Ingrid Hadeland getting ready to challenge Chris Winter, it looks like, maybe. Uh, there's a couple lapped cars in front, Kenny Steffens and Tom Wilson up there. That might serve as a good block for Hadeland to try and get around Chris Winter. Uh, she thinks again about it, and she's going to follow on the long straightaway. Here's Jacob Eichholz, who has some brake issues, and he slams into the back of Hadeland, and that's going to do some terminal damage and puncture the radiator of the 88 car, and that is going to take him out of the race. Tough break for Jacob Eichholz. He was running in the top five in that car. Here's Sam Lussar, who is now missing his hood, and, oh, Lars Ryu makes some contact with him, and he goes spinning off into the dirt. And uh, this is lap number 22, Sam Lussar uh, would continue on despite uh, that spin, as would Laris Ryu. Here is Isaac Michaels running in 14th place on lap number 23. Isaac Michaels getting ready to go another, or getting ready to go a lap down to the leader who has absolutely been flying for the exception of Ingrid Hadeland. He has just been driving away from the field and setting in, uh, a pace that has been met by nearly nobody. Here's Steve Peterson in the 23, getting ready to go an umpteenth lap down. Tries to get out of the way of Cody Deke, slides a bit wide and hits the wall, spins out in front of the leaders, and, uh, well, that was a bit, that was a bit foolish of him. Oh, there's Creeper Stevenson in the background having some more shenanigans. Creeper Stevenson sweeps a bit wide, slams into Tom Delgado, takes both of them spinning off into the grass. And now Tom Delgado goes off into the dirt. Creeper Stevenson continues on despite the damage. Here is Ramsey Cockiner, and he's running in seventh place on lap number 24. He's kind. He's uh, been outshone by his teammate all weekend, but he is still doing quite well. He's currently running in seventh place, as I mentioned before, which is an admirable run, uh, considering that this team has switched power plants to the Sar Carolina. Here we go on board with Richard Dean MacGyver. There's Creeper Stevenson up there causing some more shenanigans, and he hooks Scott Wollen in the exact place that Alex Phillips hooked him. Creeper Stevenson dives into the pit lane and will serve another penalty. Uh, Barry Juveno and Sam Lussar having a disagreement there. They're not even battling for a position. Uh, uh, Steve Peterson goes off in front of him. Sam Lussar spins uh, Juveno, but Juveno has none of it, and Sam Lussar goes spinning once again into the dirt. Luke Pellerin has some brake problems on that number 43 car, runs into the back of the 34 car, and that's going to do enough damage to send him into the pit lane, and I think they're going to remove the hood of that car because the damage is terminal enough to the hood that it's blocking his vision, and they don't want that to happen. So instead of actually pounding it down, they're just going to send him back out without the hood on. Nick Azure and Magenta Nelson Andrew battling for the 19th position, and they're sweeping side by side. And, uh, well, it looks like Magenta Nelson Andrew is going to do the crossover and take the spot away from Frank, uh, from Nick Azure, excuse me. Frank Azure competing in PCC Lights this season. Here is Nicholas Corradovas making his first pit stop on lap number 28 of 40 his only pit stop of the race, and that means that he is going to uh, spring the rest of the leaders in. Here's Richard Dean MacGyver pitting, and Chris Winter bringing his car into the field, or into the pit lane. And uh, now 
Nicholas Cordovos comes out with an absolutely massive lead once again. So Nicholas Cordovos, this is his race to lose. He has led every single lap so far, I believe. Except, oh no. He did not lead last lap. Ingrid Hadeland did because she did not pit. Now Ingrid Hadeland here is the fastest car on track. She's moved up to second place. And uh, if you look in the distance, I believe right here somewhere in the S's, Yes, that third or fourth car up there is Nicholas Corradovo, so she has definitely caught him. Uh, Ingrid Hadeland doing wonders with this number 002 car. Uh, Damon Jones now gets hooked by Claire Ousey. He goes into the wall, and uh, that's going to be the end of his race. Uh, that car is smoking heavily. So taken out by a lapped car while running in the top 10, a tough break for Damon Jones. He was having an absolutely fantastic run in this 48 car and he was just proving to the people that he has uh, definitely improved on these road courses. And he just got stumped by Ryan Matthews. Tom Delgado runs into the back of Matthews and takes both of them into the wall on the front straightaway going on board with Tom Delgado here. And you can see up in front he sees this incident and he's going to take it kind of easy following Ike Durbin. And oh, and Ryan Matthews pulls up in front of him and he just had nowhere to go but into the side of them, taking both of them into the wall. Here is Claire Ousier trying to follow Kenny Steffens. Steffens runs into the back of him. And, uh, well, she just dumped Steffens off the track, and there's Steve Peterson kind of doing his own thing. Ingrid Hadeland brings her car into the pits to, uh, I think, repair some of that rear end damage. This is her second pit stop of the race. Uh, to, uh, the first time she repaired some damage. Here's Ike Durbin, and he's running up in... I believe he's running in ninth place now on lap number 32. An excellent run for Ike Durbin. He started way back in the field. He didn't set a qualifying time uh, due to near the end of the session. A bunch of people were gambling on being able to set a time, but uh, the rain started falling, so he missed his chance to set a qualifying time. Here's Richard Dean MacGyver getting ready to put uh, Claire Ousier a lap down. Richard Dean MacGyver goes sideways, and uh, they go side by side, takes her into the wall. That's going to put her out of the race, Claire Ousier. After she uh, took out a few cars, I think that might be well-deserved. Going on board with Richard Dean MacGyver here, you can see that she just crowded him, gave him no room, and he turned her off the track, and that's going to be the end of her day. Richard Dean MacGyver was running in third place at the time, and you can just see all the damage on that car. Uh, they haven't brought him into the pits yet for some reason, though. So I think they're hoping that the race will end soon enough that he won't lose too many positions and that uh, he should just, you know, stay out and hopefully not lose too many more spots or time. Here's Ryan Jeffries running in 11th place on lap number 33, doing a fantastic job in this Lucas Motorsports car. Uh, his his longtime sponsor, Caterpillar, left him, so Conquest uh, jumped on board, one of his longtime associates. They have stepped up their sponsorship game, at least for the North American rounds. So they're, they're going to be on this car for quite a few races. Here is Sam Lussar, and he's going to make contact with Greg Max and go spinning once again. So Sam Lussar has spun more times, really, than I can count. Uh, I think it's four times now. Uh, Sam Lussar has spun out, but he's still running in the top 20. Uh, here is Ramsey Cockiner, and so uh, he... It's getting crowded by Ryan Matthews, puts him into the wall, and now uh, Ramsey Cockiner's day goes from uh, good to bad really fast. Ryan Matthews, uh, his day is done. Here's Alex Phillips, and he's going to make some contact there, and he's going to go for a spin. Alex Phillips has been running uh, somewhat decent. He's been running up in the top 20 for quite a bit of the event. Here is... Uh, Here's John Bracci, and oh, he just got crowded by Alex Phillips. He goes off and into the wall, and uh, that wasn't too nice of Alex Phillips. Uh, he should be a little bit more spatially aware of the cars that are coming to lap him. Uh, John Bracci would continue on without too much of an issue. Here is Tom Wilson, who is running in 10th place now with just a handful of laps to go. It's, only, it's lap number 37 of 40, so just three more laps to go. Tom Wilson... Uh, hoping to bring a top 10 run home for Johnson Racing, and this team needs it. Uh, they haven't been doing so well on road courses in years past. Here is the 39 car getting ready to put, uh, getting ready to put Richard Dean MacGyver a lap down. So their gamble has kind of failed, to be honest. 
as now he is in I believe fifth or sixth place at this point. Here on uh, two to go, Nicholas Cordova is getting ready to lap Nick Azure as uh, he swings a bit wide, runs into Nick Azure, and he spins it out as Nicholas Cordova's own. Oh, no, he goes into the dirt and everybody misses him. Uh, not too much damage on that car, but a tough break for the leader. I believe this is the second time in three years that the leader has spun out or been involved in an incident with just a few laps ago, and he brings it into the pits. There doesn't appear to be a lot of damage on that car, but that's a very interesting call for Nicholas Cordovos. I think he might uh, have just thrown the race away, but as we look on board Ingrid Hadeland, here on the last lap, she has taken the white flag, but it appears that Nicholas Corodovos is going to come out in front of her, and uh, it's going to be Ingrid Hadeland's job to hunt him down, and it looks like there might be an incident up ahead. Yes, there was an incident up ahead, and we're going to see what happened there. Uh, looks like a couple cars were involved. Uh, Laris Ryu collides with Creeper Stevenson, who just uh, should probably have parked already. Laris Ryu gets the car rolling, and Creeper Stevenson is going to uh, continue on for some reason. Tom Wilson's good run comes to an abrupt end as that car slows on track. Very tough break for him. He was having such a strong run. He was going to finish in the top ten, and there go the leaders right on by. But now, Nicholas Corradovos coming down in the final two turns. You see Ingrid Hadeland back there. Uh, she gained quite a bit of time, but... Looks like too little too late is now coming out of the final turn. And down this hill, Nicholas Cordovos is going to win the first round here at Road Atlanta. Ingrid Hadeland finishes in second place. Chris Winter rounds out the podium. A very strong run for him in that 56 car. Andy Lambert and ROG Motorsports are back on top of their form as they finish in fourth place. And how about Luke Peller in there in fifth place in debut in that number 43 car. A very, very strong run for the French-Canadian in his first ever start. Lenny Jacobs in sixth place, Ike Durbin in seventh. Richard Dean MacGyver's gamble did not pay off and he finished down in eighth place. Ryan Jeffries has a very strong run with his new team despite the loss of his sponsorship Caterpillar in that uh, 26 car he finishes in ninth and Laris Ryu despite finishing on the last lap finishes in tenth place. Cody Deek eleventh. Ben Worthington silences his critics who called him a moving chicane and unfit to race at road courses by finishing a very strong 12th place. Isaac Michaels finishes a very strong 13th. Magenta Nelson Andrew 14th. Arliss Bennington fell all the way down to 15th place after that pit stop. Scott Wallen, despite spinning twice, finishes in 16th. Nick Azure finishes in 17th. Sam Lussard, despite uh, spinning four times, finishes in 18th. Kyle McWalla 19th. And John Bracci rounds out your top 20 in race number one. Alina Lazareva leads the field to the green flag for race number two. Ben Atkins on her outside. And right behind her is Clara Kindall. There's Gaspar D'Souza and uh, Cameron Taylor rounding out your top five. Alina Lazareva leads the field down into turn number one. She started to open up a gap over Ben Atkins, and Clara Kindall is starting to follow there. On the inside now, Clara Kindall uh, still battling side by side with Ben Atkins, but she will take the second spot away. But Lazareva has opened up a gap over Clara Kindle there as now Kindle is starting to catch up a little bit but too much for Alina Lazareva as she opens up a gap. Here is Clara Kindle now who has kept up surprisingly with uh, Alina Lazareva there as Lazareva the Russian rookie getting her first ever run in the Griffith Motorsports number 59 car as now it looks like Kindle is just barely starting to catch. Oh yeah definitely in that turn she starts to catch up to Alina Lazareva. Uh, Gabriel Messina suffers a brake failure on that number 999 car, the Brazchem car. And he goes off, and he's going to have to get towed back to the pits. He was running in sixth place when this happened. As we go on board with him, and he runs into the back of Cameron Taylor, sends Cameron Taylor off a bit. And, uh, well, he goes into the wall. He's going to get a tow back to the pits, but he's going to be able to drive on after that. Here is Roy Cook in the 22, makes some contact with Robert Nelson, and puts Nelson into the wall and uh, continues to ride on Nelson's quarter panel. They were battling for, uh, I believe they were battling for ninth and 10th at this point. Roy Cook continues on without too much of a problem. Here is Duncan Cobb, by far the surprise of qualifying. He's up to sixth place by lap number three, 
And uh, well, there goes Cameron Taylor into the pits. He has just inherited fifth place now, I believe. But Duncan Cobb is from the PCC Light Series. He ran in that series last year in a mostly unsponsored car. But now True TV has jumped on board his entry, and he hopes to have a very strong run here today. Here's Alina Lazareva in the 59 Aerotel car. Uh, Aerotel and Gazprom on that number 59 car. As she's about to put uh, Junior Harder in a lap down. Junior Harder, as you saw earlier, got a black flag for cutting the course. And uh, Lazareva appears to just be taking her sweet old time trying to get by him. And uh, surprised she hasn't passed him yet. Uh, as Clara Kendall now definitely starts to close the gap, Clara Kendall swings wide, getting ready to make the pass, but Lazareva throws the block. Uh, still not getting around Junior Hardern for some reason. Now Kendall maybe takes a look on the inside, but nope. Looks like Junior Hardern gets on by. And uh, jo Joe Craig skates off into the grass, so is Barbara Burt. And right behind this mess, there goes Alex Olenko getting dumped by Cale Bernhardt Jr. Uh, Mr. Spatial Awareness himself, Cale Bernhardt Jr. They were battling back for 30th position. Uh, Alex Olenko making his first start. He attempted quite a few races last year, but did not qualify for any of them. Now with this double race format, he should be able to make all of his starts. Now Whitney Fuller throwing that car all around the track. Uh, Barbara Burt's not too impressed, and she hooks her into the tire wall, and that's going to be the end of the race for Whitney Fuller, who was running, uh, I believe they were running in the top 15 at this point. See there, Barbara Burt uh, not too impressed, and she just hooks, hooks her after uh, she started to skirt across the track in front of her path. Here is Jordan Demas in the number 74 for Pentelex Racing. This is a local entry. And, oh, he just got turned by, I believe that was, uh, that was the 25 car there of, uh, Denny Adams, who just absolutely hooked him into the wall. We're going to go on board with Greg Woodard here and see what Woodard saw. See there, the Pentelex cuts across the nose of Denny Adams, and Woodard has nowhere to go but right into the side of Adams in the 25 car, and that's going to take Woodard out of the race very early on that number 41 Phoenix performance like Hoya. Here is, uh, I believe this is Pete Maverick, who is very slow on lap number seven. He's running in seventh place, and something is not quite right with that car. He's going to bring it uh, to a screeching halt here on this uh, long straightaway, and he's going to get towed back to the pits, although the damage to that car, whatever it was, is terminal. Here's Alina Lazareva getting ready to put John Kirkpatrick lap down. She skirts wide and hooks John Kirkpatrick and goes into the wall herself and uh, shoots across the track but still hangs on to the lead. Alina Lazareva was going to put uh, Kirkpatrick a lap down, misjudged it a bit going through the S's and just wrecked Kirkpatrick and herself. There's quite a bit of side damage on that car. Here's Junior Harder and later that same lap sweeping wide and Josh Marshall's there and Marshall just puts uh, Harder into the wall. Harder goes sliding into the grass. Harder's already multiple laps down at this point. Uh, due to a couple black flags that you saw that he received earlier. Here's Clara Kendall as, ooh, Lazareva uh, drove her a bit wide there, being a bit too aggressive maybe, but uh, Lazareva dives into the pits, and that will hand the lead over to Clara Kendall now, who has really opened up quite a gap over the rest of the field. Uh, quite quite a sizable gap. Here's Kelly Blackwater, and there's Dan Foray as well. Dan Foray hooks her into the wall. Dan Foray gets up on the side. Daniel Sharp also involved. As Kelly Blackwater slides through the grass, that car is going to get back on track here. And we're going to go on board with Chris Benson, who is also involved in this incident. You see there, uh, Dan Foray got a piece, and Chris Benson slams right into him as well. A couple other cars skirt by. There's Casey Lester. And all these cars would get rolling, I believe, Foray and... Uh, Foray, I think Blackwater and... Uh, I think that's it, would retire from this incident. As Daniel Sharp catches the wall there, he's going to continue on and soldier on after this incident. Here's Matt Brinson, who I told you about before. He is running a nine-year-old car, road course car there. You see Joe Craig got into him a bit. He slides a bit wide, hits Robert Nelson, slides across the track, and there's Lozereva and Barbara Burr also gets collected in the number 366 car, and that is going to take out your pole sitter as well as Burt and uh, also... Matt Brinson was involved, and he is done for the day as well there. Uh, so tough break for all of those involved. 
Matt Brinson was just trying to get out of the way of the leaders and his car snapped loose on him. Here is Denny Adams as he suffers an apparent brake failure and just goes off into the sand. And, uh, well, that's really all I can say about that. I believe he would be done for the day after that incident. Here's Ben Atkins, who has worked his way up to third place by lap number 13, getting ready to put a lap on Billy Ray James there in the 89 car. Billy Ray James, the one who won the uh, owner's points title for that 11 car last season with uh, Claire Aussier. As Ben Atkins skirts on by, Ben Atkins has had... Uh, he hasn't had too much luck in the PCC Cup Series thus far. He has one good finish to his name at uh, at Brands Hatch last season. Here is Richard Hertz, who's doing a great job. Uh, he's currently running up in the ninth position. And, uh, well, he's doing a good job. There's John Kirkpatrick in front of him. Oh, I spoke too soon. Uh, he just hooked John Kirkpatrick and took him into the wall and himself. Uh, I believe that's, uh, that's James Hewitt also involved there. You see... He was sweeping across the track. He really just had nowhere to go uh, but into the wall. And Alex Alenko is also involved. But uh, all who were involved would continue on except for John Kirkpatrick. Here is Gaspar D'Souza who's running in second place. And uh, something does not look right with that car. He's reporting that the car has lost power. As you see, here comes Ben Atkins to pass him. And that problem would indeed be terminal. And that would put Gaspar D'Souza out of the race very early on. A very tough break for him. Now, Duncan Cobb uh, has moved up to, four, to fourth place now on lap number 14. See, right up there, there's Brian Gallagher. And he'd be battling him for third if he could catch up there. So a very surprising run for uh, Duncan Cobb here in this number 70 car. His first ever career start. And here is Joe Craig running in 12th place, going to pass Gaspar D'Souza. And he goes into the wall forced by, I believe that was uh, Daniel Sharp, who was a lap down nonetheless. I don't know what he was thinking, but he should uh, definitely have yielded. As you see there, it was just a bad situation. They went three wide, and uh, Daniel Sharp just uh, held his line, and Joe Craig ended up getting dumped into the wall because of that. Here's Clara Kindle, and she has opened up a 12-second lead over Ben Atkins now. On lap number 16, there's Gabriel Messina, who's back out on track. He just went, uh, I believe, two laps down in that number 999 car. But Clara Kendall has opened up a huge gap on the rest of the field, uh, something that I don't know if they're going to be able to surmount. Richard Hertz, oh, oh, are you kidding me, Kale Bernfart Jr.? Use your mirrors, seriously. As, uh, oh, there goes Brian Gallagher, and Gallagher is out of the race from third place. A huge blow to him and his chances of winning this race. Here's Gallagher and he just really, why didn't a spotter tell him that uh, Hertz was sitting there in the middle of the track? Uh, Hertz would continue on, Gallagher would not, and uh, Bernfart Jr., you use your mirrors, seriously. Duncan Cobb makes contact with Billy Ray James, goes across the track, hops over the curbs, and slides through the grass, or through the grass and the dirt. Hits the tire wall there, but will continue on from third place. A uh, huge, huge blow to Duncan Cobb, but Cobb would continue on without uh, too much damage here. Candace Bowman blows up from 12th place. She was having a very strong run in this number 20 car for the motorsports team. This team has acquired quite a bit of funding after bringing Ryan Matthews on board. Matthews built his own chassis for the team and uh, is providing quite a bit of sponsorship. Candace Bowman also bringing a sponsorship. She moves up from the PCC Lights series. Uh, she finished in the top 10 last season. Here's Clara Kendall getting ready to put a lap on Roy Cook and Casey Lester. Both of these cars are running actually in the top 10 right now. They're running uh, 9th and 10th. Casey Lester in 9th place. A very strong run for that number 13 car. I did not, I did not expect to see that car running nearly as well as it has, although this race has been filled with attrition. Casey Lester, as I said before, in ninth place, getting ready to put a lap on, uh, I believe that's Junior Hardern up there, as he skirts around Hardern. Oh, uh, Kendall hooks him, and Casey Lester goes into the wall from ninth place. Uh, it looks like he's going to be able to continue on, but he lost a couple positions there, and he's got quite a bit of rear end damage on that uh, number 13 car. Oh, there we go. You just see how Clara Kendall had none of that. She was getting tired of Casey Lester holding her up. He had stayed in front of her for over half a lap at that point. 
Oh, there's uh, Josh Marshall going around Ian Elias after contact with J.C. Carpenter there in that number 79 car. Carpenter having a pretty strong run. That was actually four position, that battle right there. As now Kindall ducks into the pits on lap number 20. Perhaps she was a bit worried about some of the contact she made with Junior Hardern there. Maybe it had developed a tire rub. As now Ben Atkins will take the lead. Getting ready to put Jordan Demas and J.C. Carpenter a lap down. Both of them are running in the top 15 right now. Very strong run for the 79 and 74. 79 uh, made a couple appearances last season but was well off the pace. Uh, perhaps it's the attrition or the addition of Console Energy as their sponsor. Also, uh, the 74 doing quite a good job. That team is based out of Atlanta, Georgia. And, uh, well, it's good to start out with your home race, I suppose, as J.C. Carpenter now is running in 11th place at the halfway point. So uh, if he manages to keep that car steady, this will be the best finish ever for that team in their short existence. Uh, circle track racing expanded to a two-car field uh, with Billy Ray James as well. Billy Ray James, not really known for his talent, but he did bring Billy Beer aboard as a sponsor, so... I suppose uh, you have to have one driver for talent and one for money, I guess. Uh, Console Energy is sponsoring this number 79 car, as well as Precon Marine. Doing quite a good job here, but holding off Jordan Demas for that position. Stringfellow Vincent now is in third place on lap number 22. There's Clara Kindall right in front of him after she came out of the pits. Uh, but I don't know if he's going to be able to catch her. Uh, Stringfellow Vincent, last year's champion, as this was the only team to avoid the time rip. So they completed the schedule pretty much by themselves. Uh, and uh, you can see that all that practice must have paid off because they're running quite well. Uh, Billy Ray James suffers some brake issues and runs into the back of Jordan Demas, does some damage to the hood of his car as well as the rear end of Demas's car. And it looks like Circle Track Racing uh, is going to stick with their original strategy and, he's, and they're going to pit both of their cars at the same time on lap number 23. Here is Lewis Jones on lap number 24, running in fourth place. He's worked his way up. Uh, Red Bull has entered the series and signed him, Frank Azzaretto, and for some odd reason, Chris Washer, uh, to be their drivers. Frank Azzaretto and Lewis Jones definitely appear to be good picks. Uh, Chris Washer, not, not so much. I don't know why they picked him. Uh, but here is Duncan Cobb getting ready to pass the other Red Bull driver, Frank Azzaretto. And this is for the ninth position here on lap number 25. Duncan Cobb has recovered from that spin. He pit, and uh, now he's really starting to fly his way through the field. Frank Azzaretto with his new cybernetic enhancements. Uh, definitely doing a much better job than he did last season. As uh, Well, he's currently also running up in the top 10, as I mentioned before. He was holding 9th place, now he's back down to 10th. But Frank Azzaretto doing an excellent job here today. Here is the 77 car of Cameron Taylor after getting run into by Gabriel Messina early on. He has recovered to finish. Uh, not finish, but currently he is running in fifth place here on lap number 25. He's uh, on track for a strong finish, I meant to say that, in this number 77 uh, Jobs Ohio car. Uh, good promotion by the state of Ohio on that car. And here is Ryan Griffin now, who is inherited fifth place after Cameron Taylor ducked into the pits to get some damage repaired. Uh, he hadn't exactly cycled through on his pit stops yet, but here is Ryan Griffin. He fin he's currently running up in fifth place, as I mentioned before, and this car struggled mightily last season. It only qualified for two or three races, but now Ryan Griffin is showing the true talent behind that number 44 car, and he is running up in the top five with this mobile doing an excellent job. Uh, here is James Hewitt, who's currently running in 10th place after a couple incidents. James Hewitt, the surprise Bruno winner. He entered that race nearly as a late entry. He almost missed the uh, late entry deadline of 13 days, but uh, James Hewitt running quite strong here today, proving that that win at Bruno was not a fluke, but he is currently a lap down, holding up both uh, Lewis Jones and Stringfellow Vincent there. Roy Cook suffers some electrical issues and he brings that car into the pits. He's going to lose three laps in the pits trying to get that uh, problem repaired and he will fall down to around uh, 19th place. Lewis Jones and Stringfellow Vincent bring their cars into the pits now on lap number 30 and uh, both of those cars pit and Ben Atkins brings his car in one lap later perhaps uh, sensing that these guys might 
be able to overtake him if he stayed out any longer on these old tires. So Ben Atkins brings his car into the pits from the lead. And there you can see Clara Kindle has taken back the lead. Ben Atkins hasn't even pulled back into his pit stall. Uh, but Clara Kindle now, she was only about eight seconds behind when Ben Atkins came into the pits. Clara Kindle has taken the lead and it appears that she's gonna start opening it up over Ben Atkins now. Here is Jordan Demas who I mentioned before. He is up in the top 10 in this number 74 car. I did not expect to see this car uh, even on the grid. They filled out their paper look, uh, paperwork quite late for getting into the season. They nearly missed the deadline to enter this race, but uh, here they are performing quite well, running up in the top 10 in this uh, very high attrition race. Here is uh, another driver who's performing quite well. Uh, given the circumstances, he is no longer being black flagged for cutting the course uh, after losing uh, about 10 laps for being held in the pits after cutting the course multiple times. But Junior Harder now is running in 22nd. He's gotten his act together in there. You can see, oh, how much progress he's made. He isn't cutting the course anymore in that turn. So Junior Harder and props to him. Here is uh, Billy Ray James and J.C. Carpenter. Uh, James swings wide, makes contact with Carpenter, and he goes off into the dirt. And uh, that's going to be the day pretty much done for Billy Ray James. Here is Clara Kendall now with just a few uh, laps to go. She's got a 32-second lead over Ben Atkins uh, on lap number 36. So barring any, in, uh, barring any potential lapped cars or uh, her blowing up, I don't really see how she's going to lose the lead here today. Here is Duncan Cobb, who's up to fifth place now on lap number 38, doing quite a good job in that number 70 car. It looks like he's going to bring a very strong run home, as is uh, this car here of uh, Daniel Sharp. He's currently running a 13th place. He managed to recover after a few incidents early on, as is Gabriel Messina, who is currently battling with Richard Hertz there. He just passed him for the 15th position. So after a brake failure and losing a couple laps getting those repaired, he has recovered to a top 15 finish. So Gabriel Messina, uh, perhaps it's his road course expertise, but he's managed to recover quite handily and uh, he's gonna finish in top 15. And there goes Clara Kindle's engine on the final lap. Clara Kindle is uh, pouring out smoke here on the final lap, but she is not relenting she is still trying to continue on as fast as she can trying to get to the finish she's she had a 32 second lead as I mentioned before as she comes down this long straightaway agonizingly slow that car spewing out smoke I think she might be able to do it Ben Atkins if he does catch her is only going to catch her in the final couple turns as you see here is Ben Atkins coming up you can see the smoke trail there and Ben Atkins shoots to the outside Clara Kendall goes through the grass, and Ben Atkins is going to take the lead with just a couple turns left. And there is an incident up ahead. Ben Atkins slows down, and it looks like uh, Richard Hertz's day is done. Let's see what happened here. Richard Hertz and Roy Cook are running nose to tail. Roy Cook is a couple laps ahead of Hertz, I believe, at this point. And Cook hooks Hertz into the wall, and uh, that's going to be the end of the day for Richard Hertz. But let's see what happened here. Uh, going on board with Roy Cook. You just see there that he just got pinched off the track and takes Hertz into the wall. Ben Atkins is going to come by here. And oh, Clara Kendall takes the lead, but it's going to be a photo finish now. Clara Kendall on the pits. And you see there the lead swapped a couple times as Clara Kendall dove into the pits hoping to get a good run. But Ben Atkins is going to win this race in a photo finish as Clara Kendall attempts to dive for the pits but has to make pit road speed lest she get penalized. Lewis Jones finishes in third place, a very strong run for the Australian. Stringfellow Vincent finishes in fourth place. Uh, good for him after finishing uh, first in the championship in the pretty much non-existent last season. Uh, Ryan Griffin finishes a very strong fifth place. Frank Azzaretto sixth. Uh, good run for the Cyber Frank there in sixth place. Dan Lechleiter finishes a very strong but very quiet seventh place. Duncan Cobb falls back late to 8th place after having to pit for uh, an un after uh, collecting some uh, debris on the grill of that car. James Hewitt finishes in ninth place, proving that his Bruno win was not a fluke. Jordan Demas, a very strong run for the local team in 10th place. Ian Elias 
in 11th. Casey Lester, a call out to Casey Lester in that underfunded number 13 car for finishing in 12th place. Uh, Daniel Sharp finishes in 13th. J.C. Carpenter in the number 14 car brings that car home a top 15 finish, its first ever top 15 for that underfunded operation. Gabriel Messina, uh, the Brazilian, he finishes in 15th place. Richard Hertz, despite all those collisions and retiring on the last lap, finishes in 16th place. Cameron Taylor had some issues late in the going uh, with some uh, electrical issues. I believe the battery in that car actually died a couple times and they had to switch uh, not only batteries but also ignition boxes. He finishes in 17th place. Kale Bernfart Jr., uh, Mr. Spatial Awareness himself, had a few incidents today and finished in 18th place. Roy Cook uh, also had electrical issues and finished in 19th. And Josh Marshall retired with four laps to go with a suspension failure in that car but still brings it home in 20th place. Now let's take a look at your point standings. As you can see here, uh, Nicholas Corridovos leads the points. Ben Atkins is in second place. The two winners, Clara Kindall, led the most laps in her race, so she takes third away from Ingrid Hadeland. And ties galore. We've got Chris Winter and Lewis Jones, Andy Lambert and Stringfellow Vincent, Luke Pellerin and Ryan Griffin, Lenny Jacobs and Frank Azaretto, Dan Lecklater and Ike Durbin, Richard Dean McGyver and Duncan Cobb, Ryan Jeffries and James Hewitt, and Laris Ryu and Jordan Demas all in ties. All the way down to 20th place, we have ties. So uh, next race, hopefully a lot of these ties will be resolved as we head out west to Phoenix International Speedway. Uh, hope you guys will join us next time. This has been the PCC Cup Series uh, Road Atlanta signing off.